हेलो गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर वेलकम टू द इंटरव्यू तो बेन कुड यू प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस योरसेल्फ एंड शेयर अ बिट अबाउट योर बैकग्राउंड एंड व्हाट ब्रिंग्स यू हियर टुडे यस श्योर सर हेलो सर आई एम तेजस्वी आई हैव बीन वर्किंग इन एन आईटी सर्विस मैनेजमेंट फॉर अबाउट 6 ईयर माय प्राइमरी फोकस इज ऑन चेंज मैनेजमेंट आई स्टार्टेड ऑफ एज अ चेंज कोऑर्डिनेटर एंड नाउ Uh, i manage global change rollouts uh, post implementation reviews and cap uh, facilitation across multiple teams and regions in my current company i'm looking forward uh, to join your company and uh, you know manage the complete change management as a change manager okay good what are the types of changes in itil and how do you handle them uh, sure sir so basically uh, there are three type of main changes first one is a standard change then we have normal change and emergency change okay so standard change is uh, our type of low risk these are repeatable and pre approved changes for example uh, scheduled password reset or deploying a printed drive okay so in this uh, they follow a documented process and it doesn't need a cab approval because deploying a printer uh, is not impacting anything as mostly right so that's why it's a kind of standard change which follow a standard procedure then we have the normal change uh, these changes require full risk assessment along with cab approval and uh, uh, these changes uh, are very in complexity like uh, you know server patching or deploying a new application module or making some critical code changes in the production instance so this is about normal change then we have uh, last type which is uh, emergency change uh, so these are the high priority changes and these needed to be fixed uh, immediately because uh, they have created from an incident okay so uh, these high priority changes needed to fix something urgent like uh, production outage or security vulnerability so they are implemented quickly but must be reviewed afterward by the cap so these are the type of changes we have okay so how do you assess the risk of a change uh, sure sir so to assess the risk of a change we use a risk matrix in tools uh, like service now okay and we consider the following things like uh, how critical the affected service is how complex the change is uh whether there is a rollout plan or rollback plan associated with that change and what is the time of deployment like peak hours non peak hours so each of these factors uh, contribute to a risk score and finally we come up with one of the three value like uh, low medium and high risk and it helps us decide how much review and testing the change needs so we uh, work accordingly once we got the change risk value okay come to the next question what is your role in cap meetings uh, so uh, being a change manager uh, i manage the cap process end to end and this include uh, preparing the agenda uh, and uh, reviewing the uh, change readiness along with that inviting relevant approvers all the stakeholders and making sure all change details such as impact testing roll out or back out or plan you know timing and all are cl clearly presented okay in the change record or in the form so during this meeting i help resolve conflict or concerns raised by different businesses or tech teams uh, so uh, at present this is my current role at the, in cap meetings okay tell me about a failed change and what you learned great uh, sure okay sir sure uh, so if i recall uh, we once rolled out uh, a database index change to improve the performance you know making some index level changes in database is very critical it may happen that uh, the performance get degraded so so that's what happened there it was not tested under production like load because we tested it on uh, development and qa which were not at all uh, comparable to the production uh, 
live count right and after going live it caused slowdown in our crm we had to roll back the change immediately and uh, obviously uh, we got uh, uh, bad feedback from the client they were not happy uh, so after this failed change what lesson i learned so i learned that functional testing is not enough okay performance and load testing must be the part of a change validation we cannot ignore performance and load testing it is much much needed because in production there are a lot number of people than what we have tested in sub productions so this is it sir okay good cap is scheduled after your change window the change is high priority what now okay so after going through your question it means uh, it is truly urgent okay like it's uh, fixing a production issue i would trigger the emergency change in this case which uh, allow fast approvals from the key stakeholders without waiting the cap without waiting for the cap okay uh, if it's not critical i would postpone the change and uh, i notify all stakeholders and update the schedule accordingly and follow the procedure so i have explained both cases here what i will do in case of urgency and what i will do in case of it's not a critical change but high priority okay okay tell me our developer pushed to production without approval what steps would you take okay sir in this case that's obviously an unauthorized change i would immediately raise a formal change request after the fact and document it properly uh i will also inform the governance team about that and finally i would assess if the change causes any issues or not i will prepare a complete document for that i will also uh, work with development team to understand the reason to understand why it happened and ensure better control and training uh, to prevent such type of incident in next time going forward and then finally we present uh, this to our higher management as well as uh, to the client okay and uh, look for their feedback as well we have to make things uh, uh, quite transparent because uh, anyhow uh, and they will understand and they will get to know and if we are not informing them obviously it is a much bigger issue than what uh, this unauthorized change is doing it is a lack of uh, you know transparency lack of uh, uh, lack of uh, you know mutual understanding so we should avoid that and uh, be ready to accept our mistakes that's what i think here okay good how do you handle a stakeholder pushback on a necessary but risky change yeah so it happens okay so this is uh, happened with me as well so in such cases i first uh, listen to their concerns is it about timing is it about impact or is it about something else okay i will uh, just listen to them okay after that uh, i share detailed information like uh, what testing was done what rollbacks exist what all was the business benefit of that risky change okay if after doing all this after sharing all such information they are still not convinced i do escalate the matter to the cab for a decision and put forward all this change and the benefit and everything uh, in front of cab and once they decide and whatever they decide we follow what do you do if multiple incidents appear after a change okay so this situation is uh, a real time situation i can say and it means usually uh, the change causes some issues so in this case i immediately coordinate with the technical teams to either fix the issue or do a roll back i will also notify all the impacted users and update the change ticket as well we then hold a post implementation review 
to find out what happened actually, why the change was failed, was it failed because of testing, was it failed because of some kind of missing dependency, or was it uh, because of some, you know, uh, movement issue or deployment issue. So all these things will be thoroughly, uh, you know, uh, checked, and then we come to a conclusion, and then we prepare something like uh, so that uh, uh, this will not happen again in future. Okay, very well explanation. How do you handle blackout windows or change fridges? Okay, uh, so uh, blackout windows are planned periods. It means, uh, uh, for example, financial year end, right? And in this period, uh, there are no changes allowed because uh, the teams are already busy and we no, do not uh, want uh, to make anything or to do any blunders, okay? So no changes are allowed to reduce the risk, okay? So uh, I plan such calendars in advance and coordinate with the business units to ensure critical changes are done outside those windows, okay? Only emergency changes are allowed during the blackout windows. Okay. What if the business user refuses to approve, but IT insists the change is urgent? Uh, so being a change manager, I act as a neutral point of coordination here. Uh, I try to help the business understand the urgency and the potential risk of delay. Okay. This is very important here. And help IT understand the business concerns as well, which I get from the business user. So finally, we come to a common ground. If both sides still disagree, I escalate again uh, the case to the cap. Let the all stakeholders decide what is best here. Okay, or I can go to change authority. Again, uh, most of the people in change authority are from cap. They also, uh, okay, put forward this proposal to the cap and then uh, we make a final call. Okay, come to the next question. What are the seven R of change management? Okay, uh, so the seven R's of change management is uh, who raised the change that is raised and what is the reason of it that is reason, what returned is expected, okay, that is return, what risks are involved, that is risk, R again, Number five is uh, what resources are needed. That is again R. Who is responsible for execution? Number six. And finally, are their relationships with other changes? So these are the five, uh, sorry. So these are the seven R's of change management, sir. Oh, very well explanation. Thank you. How do you prevent failed changes? Okay. So being a change manager, we have to follow some strategy. And I follow the following strategy like uh, test changes in the environment that mimics production, okay? Along with the sub-productions. Conduct peer review before CAP. This is also very important. Uh, then uh, I try to use a detailed implementation plan with rollout. And then I try to use a detailed implementation plan which roll back uh, steps. After that, uh, I make sure deployment is done during the low risk windows. It is very important because in case anything happens, if change goes wrong, then uh, much uh, damage if uh, the if we are deploying the changes in the high risk windows, okay? And then finally, I ensure all the dependencies are mapped. Okay, like uh, other teams, other changes, other systems, all are mapped to that change so that everyone is aware of what is happening in that change. Okay, nice. Come to, come to the next question. How do you measure success in change management? So there are various ways, there are various matrices. Uh, so we uh, generally track uh, change success rate, uh, rollback percentages, and uh, uh, post change inc incidents. Emergency change ratio is one of the uh, good uh, criteria to measure the change success. And approval time is also one of the uh, good uh, criteria here. 
So all these matrices uh, tells us uh, where the process gap might exist. So we have uh, we have the values of all these things. We closely monitor that, and then we finally come to uh, a conclusion: how much success uh, we got in this chain management. Okay, great. How do you coordinate changes across multiple regions and time zones? Okay, uh, so in this case, uh, we use a follow the sun model or we pick a neutral time like a late evening UTC. So this is what we follow at present organization. Okay, so in that case, I coordinate with the regional leads to handle the validations before and after the changes. In this case, uh, communication is very, very critical. So we already have uh, group chats. We already have uh, shared documents. And finally, we have staggered change windows as well, if needed. We also have uh, one common site that is uh, uh, what we call uh, SharePoint, where we have all the such process documents available so that everyone is available, so that everyone will go through it and they know what we have to do in such cases when uh, we have to uh, you know coordinate across the globes okay come to the last question what is the difference between a change request and a release sure sir a change request uh, uh, is a formal request to make a change it's basically about a governance approval and risks involved in that change what change we are doing whereas in case of a release, it is a package of code or feature that is ready to go live, okay? Releases uh, usually go through multiple change requests. Change request, as I mentioned, focus more on governance, keeping everything intact, whereas release, uh, you can say, is more technical in nature. I would, uh, uh, yeah, in my view, it is like that only. Okay, good. Thank you for your time and thoughtful responses yes sir uh, welcome sir i and i look forward uh, joining your organization thank you so much yeah good luck for your future thank you bye bye